Hey there, Gary Scott uh, from Slovakia, Klokoč, town of uh, 514 people. And uh, we got four minutes to go, <clears throat> three minutes. But if you're logging in and you have any questions, please unmute. And uh, yeah, just feel free to speak up. <clears throat> yeah, for some reason, I can't see if anyone's logged in. Uh, and I don't want to change anything in my screen in case I mess it up. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. We'll get started here in two minutes. Beautiful day here in uh, central Slovakia. That's the uh, hay paddy. <clears throat> Feel free to unmute so I can uh, hear your voice. So you're connecting to audio. There you're on. Oh, where's my hand? Hi, Patty. Hey there. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Hey. Hi. If you want to unmute your mic, feel free to do that. Okay, oh. can you hear us now? Hey, there you go. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, I forgot to unmute it. Yeah, we're not very techy. <laughs> well, neither am I. So, oh. no problem. Good to see you both. Yeah. Well, hope you don't have the interruptions like you did yesterday with that announcements. I had them mute the mic in the control room so uh, <clears throat> but i'm used to interruptions i've had you know i've done hundreds of uh live talks i've had i had a show where there was a cat somebody brought a cat to a show and a dalmatian to a show and the dalmatian saw the cat and ran over and knocked over the slide projector and uh -huh. It was lucky it wasn't broken. I've had people back in the days of slides turn over the projector and 200 slides fell out that I'd spent 60 hours organizing. And so I've had slideshows in Kathmandu where we had to move to three different restaurants because we blew the fuses. I mean, I've, I've had children riding tricycles <laughs> up and down the aisles and I've I've seen it all, so you know. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty minor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good, good. Anyway, well, we're we'll ready to come. Time. So. Okay, I suppose we better get off. Yeah, oh, we're gonna block our picture here because, uh, and then I'm gonna unmute us. But we'll see. All you right. Then. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you when you get here. So okay. Good to bye. see you. Hi, Ron and Judy and Rebecca. Great to have you on the show. My name's Gary Scott. I'm uh, reporting live from Slovakia. This is our half acre of heaven uh, in central Slovakia, which is, <clears throat> and my wife is Slovakian. We met in Italy uh, as I was working in the Dolomites. And uh, it took me a year before I realized, oh, Czechoslovakia. So they had a, what they call a velvet divorce 20 odd years ago or something. So if you put a compass point where we are, we are right in the center of Europe, you know, a few hours from Vienna, Budapest, Prague, 
Krakow. <clears throat> so pretty cool spot. And we bought this half acre two years ago, put a little cabin on it. And so I've been um, really enjoying, um, you know, working on the land. So it's been great. Anyway, welcome. Uh, excited to talk to you today about the Dolomites, <clears throat> which is, to me, one of the most amazing places on the planet. And I've been around. So I named my company Right Path Adventures because I like to keep people on the right path and find the right path for them. And uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so this is my little um, uh, logo. Looks like a guy with a trekking pole, right? But it's seven different elements, which is spirit, summit, serenity, harmony, nature, power, and control. So um, all the elements I hope to uh, achieve. <clears throat> so I spent many years uh, in the mountains. My first actual international trip was when I was six weeks old, the earliest you could fly internationally. And we lived in Pakistan for a year. My father was a diplomat and a military man for 40 years. And I became, uh, <clears throat> well, we went to America when I was eight, lived in uh, the Midwest, but we traveled all over the country and we went to the Canadian Rockies. We paddled down on a, on a, in a canoe on Lake Louise and I saw mountains for the first time growing up in a flat area in Australia. And I was just blown away and something very magical and magnetic hit me. And I turned to my father and asked him a couple of questions. And I said, I, I want to climb mountains. And so at the age of eight, I found out that Mount Everest was the highest mountain on earth and it became my goal to climb it. And I've done two successful Everest expeditions, 40 treks to the Himalayas <clears throat> and became a professional mountain guide, uh, rock climbing instructor, 40 treks to the Himalayas, um, three times on Denali, all over the world. It's been a fantastic adventure. And now I just love walking and um, being safe and not being cold and eating great food and not worrying about altitude. And I discovered the Dolomites 12 years ago and just fell in love with the place. It's a Disneyland for walkers and hikers at any level. And it's um, just a really magical place for many reasons, which you'll about to discover as I unfold this, uh, uh, this talk. <clears throat> and so I try to use new photos every year. So most of these shots are from this last season, which was a short season, uh, just a couple of months. Uh, but um, <clears throat> I've, I have, um, I take small groups on six day walking tours or longer and um, often combine trips with uh, nearby areas. So let's get started. And if you have any questions, please unmute your mics and feel free to speak up. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm also very available through email and phone. I'm gonna be in the US in um, starting, well, we leave Friday, today's Sunday and uh, gonna be there for a month renting a 30 foot RV, quite an adventure and driving through some national parks in Utah and Arizona. So that's gonna be a fun trip. Anyway, so <clears throat> this is, um, I'm gonna start talking about Lake Garter and the Dolomites because a lot of people fly into either Venice or Milan. And I, I'm, a, I'm happy to help people plan what to do before and after heading to the Dolomites. I used to pick people up in Venice, but it was quite a drive, like three and a half hours down, three and a half hours back and pretty stressful. And I was exhausted by the end of it. So I now meet people in Bolzano, which is an easy train ride from either Venice or Milan, but I, um, I've spent a lot of time in, um, on Lake Garda. And everyone hears about Lake Como, which is cool, but um, certainly uh, Lake Garter is much more authentic, fewer tourists, and just as beautiful. <clears throat> so you can get it, you can fly into 
um, Malpensa Airport in Milan and uh, take a train right to Desenzano Lake Garda, spend a few days there, get over jet lag and just relax and enjoy it. And there's some beautiful places, Sermione, um, great walking, great town, great restaurants, great food. And so on my Lake Garda and the Dolomites trip, <clears throat> we travel up the east side of um, uh, Lake Garda, visit Malcesina, do a hike up Monte Boldo, Malveno, Bolzano, and into uh, the mountains. So Lake Garda, that's Monte Boldo in the background, cable car up, nice hike along the ridge. Uh, and they just have these beautiful, authentic Italian towns where mostly the Italians go. You'll see very few Americans there. So this was a group that I had this summer um, just great people. And I only invite fun people. So if you're not fun, please don't sign up. Okay. So this is in Desenzano, great hotel right on the lake, great walking around the lake, easy to get into town, uh, just a great atmosphere. And you can catch a ferry over to Sirmione, see the Roman ruins, Roman villa, castle, just a great experience. And this is up on Monte Boldo, which I talked about. Cable car up, walk along the ridge, and just a phenomenal view of the mountains, the Alps on one side, the Dolomites on the other side, and down onto um, Lake Garda. And we spend the night down the bottom there. You can just see uh, uh, Mount Chesina. <clears throat> so beautiful area great um great atmosphere great shopping great walking uh great restaurants and just um the north end of lake barda is just world famous for a number of reasons but uh uh the wind picks up in the afternoon so it's incredible to watch the kite surfers the the wind surfers uh and um <clears throat> great world-class biking world-class hiking and um, got to take a sip of water, sorry. Incredible views, great shopping, great restaurants. Lake Garda is amazing. This is uh, a group that um, <clears throat> they've come on four trips with me. And um, so we're doing a hike around Sermione. Uh, you can see the, the rest of Lake Garda in the distance. So Lake Garda, you can see the bottom left much easier to get to than um, uh, Como. It's on the way to the Dolomites. And so uh, Verona is very close. You can take a day trip into Verona. I think it's a lot more fun to stay on Lake Garter and take a day trip into Verona. Pretty touristy. You can see it in a couple of hours. And then take the train up to Bolzano, where um, you know we head into the Dolomites. So the Dolomites is a pretty confusing place. When I first, um, I'd read about the Dolomites since I was 14 years old. I was big into rock climbing. And then um, I, I took a, a girlfriend at the time hiking in France. And I, I just read an article about the Dolomites. And I said, I've always wanted to go there. And I did about six months of research and um, found out that um, it was very, very hard to understand where to go and what to do. There's no sort of central spot or set hikes. And the, they speak three languages in a lot of valleys there. Two in some, as you can see on the sign, three in others. Uh, Italian, German, Deutsch, and Latin, L-A-D-I-N. 2,000-year-old Roman um, Romanche language. So kind of confusing. And back 12 years ago, there wasn't many signs in English and, or information in English. So this is me with a Italian map in a German valley. Um, <clears throat> my initials are GPS. I'm really good in the mountains, really good on trails, but I was just so confused about where to go. Um, but Figured it out, 100 Dolomites tours later, and, um, you know, I now know where to go and what to do and how to handle it. 
but it is a very confusing place. So picture the Dolomites is, you know, 100 miles by 100 miles with valley after valley after valley after valley. The Europeans don't actually call it the Dolomites. They don't say we're going to the Dolomites. They say we're going to Val Gardena, we're going to uh, the Ampezzo Valley, we're going to Val di Fassa, <clears throat> or we're going to Alta Badia. So this is, I have over a hundred maps of different areas and hiking trails in the Dolomites. This is one valley. All those red lines are the hiking trails. So where do you go? Because there's lots of hiking trails, but a lot of them are steep up or steep down or in forests. And actually there's a few that are really worth doing. And if you can imagine a huge spider web of 10, thousand miles 10,000 miles of trails interconnected with cable car it's the largest interconnected cable car system in the world they call it a, a ski carousel there's a lift ticket you can buy called the Dolomiti super ski which links 500 different lifts so it's a paradise as a walking guide be, if you know the area because we can take a cable car up hike over here, take a cable car down, chair lift up to here, over there, depending on the group and how they're doing, or we can go over here, we can go down here. Um, there's so many options, which makes it amazing. If the weather's not great, I know to go over into this valley. If the weather is great, we'll go up onto a plateau. So there's a zillion different options. It's pretty amazing. So it's a very it's a very complicated place. There's no set hikes where you have like a trailhead. If you do, it has 30 different um, trails heading off in different directions. So we utilize the extensive cable car system to get up into the plateaus rather than spending three or four hours hiking uphill and then hike up on the, the plateaus to enjoy the view. <clears throat> So the name Dolomiti came from a man, a French man called a geologist, Dudat du Dolomou. Say that three times quickly. And he was a French geologist walking from Paris to Rome, passed through uh, the Dolomites, picked up some rocks, thought they were different, sent them to a university in Austria. They, this is like 100 years ago, I joked that they emailed him back <clears throat> and said, hey, you found a new kind of rock and we're going to name it after you. So they called it the Dolomites. In German, it's Dolomiten, Italian Dolomiti, but it's the type of rock. So the area is named after this beautiful rock that... UNESCO granted World Heritage Site status in 2009, which happened to be the same summer I was there. So I don't know if I had any influence on that, but um, um, hey, Gary's finally visited the area, but it turns these beautiful shades of different colors during the day and it is magical. It's a very, very special place. So we start off in Bolzano. This is an old friend of mine. Utsi, the five and a half thousand year old ice man. He was found on the Utsi glacier and you can visit his museum in Bolzano, well worth it. He's considered the original backpacker. He was discovered in the ice um, uh, near Bolzano in the Dolomites and they have a museum dedicated to him. And you can see his backpack, his clothing, um, you can even see him he, he, and they've diagnosed his tattoos, what he had in his stomach, his last meal, um, <clears throat> how he died. It's fascinating, really a cool thing. So one of the reasons to go with a guide is that I know where to go and where not to go, where to go in good weather, where to go in bad weather. And as I mentioned, it's a complicated place. So I've 100 trips hunter groups, a lot of exploring. I've kind of figured out how to 
save people a lot of time and to take them to the best valleys because there's 25 to choose from the best hotels the best restaurants the best um mountain lodges and on the best hikes and it's what i love to do if i had a billion dollars in the bank this is what i'd do i would show people these magical places and these magical trails and so it's a lot of fun i don't do super hard stuff anymore dangerous or steep or exposed stuff i just do pleasant fun walks that pretty much anyone can do sometimes i get some hardcore hikers <coughs> excuse me but not very often so this is in an area um near the Alpe de Susie. Uh, typical group, I take between four and eight people. I have a nine-seater van and uh, we visit some, we don't walk hut to hut. You can do that, but I don't do that. Um, we stay in villages so we can explore the villages one night in a mountain lodge and uh, do day walks where you're just carrying a day pack. So <clears throat> this week I had four people and we'll have a special lunch at a mountain lodge, which is, it is absolute gourmet food. It is off the charts incredible. Some people like wine at lunch, some people like a beer, some people don't like to try the apple juice, which is famous in the area, but the food is off the charts. <clears throat> this is a viewpoint looking down in the Val Gardena, just one of our day hikes. So this is the busiest ski center in Europe. Unbelievable. And just uh, a beautiful valley. So we'll spend a night there, move on to another valley, yeah, staying in a pretty darn nice hotel, having a pretty darn nice dinner. We often eat in the hotels because the food is off the charts. As much as you can eat, People often complain they're eating too much, um, but um, breakfast spread is amazing. And I've often in these towns, you know, tried 20 or 30 different hotels to find the best place where I have the best relationship, where my people are treated like family and they welcome us back every year. So it's an all around experience. And that's why I think the Dolomites isn't like anywhere on earth. <clears throat> there's super easy hikes um the um a lot of culture a lot of history i'm a history buff so i talk a lot about the history the culture the traditions the geography the geology and in the evenings the view from a couple of our hotels is unbelievable they call it endo de siro which is a specific italian word for the colors that the light changes in the evenings on the mountains. It turns from orange to red to pink to purple. It's unbelievable. And I've found a hotel just in the last couple of years that was renovated that is off the charts where in your bedroom, in the pool, in the jacuzzi, in the bar, in the anywhere in the hotel you sit there and you look at this and i could only get a little bit of it in the photo but it's darn amazing and with the quaint tyrolean villages and townships and oh, it's pretty amazing so at the lodges you know we hike for a couple hours in the morning stop for a coffee um, hike for another couple more hours, stop for a fabulous lunch on a sun drip terrace, hike for another couple hours, have a strudel and a beer. Um, it's a pretty all round great experience. Um, this is a mountain lodge we stay at, um, great for sunrises, sunsets. Been going there for years, so I'm like family there. They, um, this is the chef, um, Diego, who's like unbelievable. The food blows people away. And just the experience being there in a 10 room mountain lodge uh, with <clears throat> where they're treated like family. It's amazing. We have 
uh, Prosecco with the owner, Igor in their family um, uh, wine room. It's a very, very special experience. And as you can see, people look kind of happy there. So um, <clears throat> we finished the trip in uh, Cortina di Apezzo. Uh, this is uh, one of our hotels, um, you know, just which is a great experience. Go out for a great dinner and uh, all round, just the Dolomites is fantastic. But I think part of it is just the relationships I've developed with these people and the lodge owners and the hotel owners who kind of tell me, I'm the only person I'm doing what I'm doing. And I think especially during these weird COVID times to travel in a small group, staying in small hotels, away from people, being up in nature, out of the cities and just um, breathing freely and uh, enjoying, you know, a beautiful, natural experience is a wonderful thing. So uh, would love any of you to join me. So the beauty of the Dolomites is there's walks for every level. In the background there, you see the Alp de Susi, which is quite easy walking, fabulous skiing, by the way. <clears throat> but I just wanted to show a couple of shots. If I have a group that I feel can handle, because I'm in a very intuitive guide. So I watch people walk and very quickly, like a ski guide, we're going to go up the hill and I'm going to take you down a bunny slope the first day. And I'm going to see how do you walk? <clears throat> how can you handle this? How do you talk about it? How do you think about it? And um, if I find that I have a group that is more comfortable on their feet, able to handle some difficult terrain, I'll take them on different hikes and there's some pretty amazing hikes that we can do but you know some people are worried that oh what if i slow down the group or i'll be too slow or whatever you know i'm a professional i deal with this all the time there's always going to be someone slower someone faster and there's lots of trails at every level so it's not a problem and i want everyone to be happy it's not about how far we walk, it's how you feel about how far you walk. And so <clears throat> I've found over the years, 10 years, 100 trips, some great hikes where people can get up into the mountains, feel good, enjoy the views, not be exhausted at the end of the day, because there's always more you can do at the end of the day. Walk around the village, take another hour hike, I've had people that are more keen, more fit, and I'd say, hey, Joe, go this way. Here's the map. <clears throat> Here's the walkie-talkie. You walk up there. We're going to go this way, and we're going to meet you here for lunch or coffee or it's strudel, whatever it is. Um, and I've had other people that, you know, halfway through the day, they say, hey, I'm doing okay, but... I'd like to take a break and we put them on a chairlift and they head back to town and we meet them back in town. So it's very easy to handle every level of group. And, you know, 95% of the time I take people on walks and at the end of the day, I say, anyone want to do any more? And they're like, no, no, we're good. We'll just walk around the town or hang out at the fabulous hotel spa. <clears throat> so there's time to enjoy the views, and I'm always trying to get people to just slow down and relax and not rush through it. And, you know, a lot of, I, I went hiking with some friends in San Diego and <clears throat> we hiked up a peak and came down and it was interesting. One of the guys said, that was the slowest we've ever done that. And I'm a pretty fit guy. I can hike fast, but I was enjoying it. I was enjoying the view and stopping and sitting and taking photographs and you know to me that's what it's all about <clears throat> so this is a group I had this summer just a great group I kind of got them to pose for that shot but nice shot huh? beautiful day the weather is often fabulous in uh, the Dolomites the season starts basically mid-June through late September 
interestingly enough, this year, I took a group. Um, we started October 3rd, started Lake Garda, finished on the 12th. We had incredible weather. So it rarely rains uh, like the rest of the Alps. There's fewer people like the rest of the Alps. And there's just a different vibe in the Dolomites. Um, <clears throat> the weather's fantastic, as I mentioned. Um, the Tyrolean people, so it's it's northern Italy. It used to be part of Austria before the First World War. So it it has this sort of the, the flair of the Italians, but the order of the Austrians. So everything's, you know, on they're on top of things. And it's so it's got a great atmosphere, a great vibe. And I'm all about how things feel. I don't, I've explored a lot of countries, thought about taking people, people people there but um this to me is a place i love to take people and i love people that are happy and appreciative and just enjoying i mean they mowed the lawn for us the week before so that was very nice but this is one of the hotels we stay at with a beautiful view over the mountains incredible indoor spa um, outdoor uh, jacuzzi where you can look at the mountains, relax in these little pavilion areas. <clears throat> and every week they have a welcome evening. Uh, this was this year, so people wore masks inside. This is Mirko and uh, the spread they have before dinner uh, is amazing. So this is a brand new four-star hotel, off the charts, beautiful. The staff are fantastic. Um, so we had appetizers there. This is the mother in the background with the mask on and just had an incredible night um, being welcomed to their brand new incredible hotel. Another day of walking, um, <clears throat> just uh, spectacular. We visited an ice cave, uh, walked inside, which was pretty fantastic. First time for a lot of people. This is 10,000 year old ice. Um, just amazing. So a lot of variety. Uh, <clears throat> then we did a day hike. These are called the Five Towers, Cinque Torre. A lot of history here. This is where the Italians based themselves during the First World War. So we're in the front lines of the First World War. We do a morning history walk lesson through the outdoor open museum. The Austrians were based on the mountains across the valley. And I talk about how the war started what the Austrians and the Europe, uh, the Italians were doing. And it's a pretty phenomenal day. So as I mentioned, I'm big into history and uh, was happy to talk to people about what happened here. And we walk through trenches and discuss, um, you know, history for a day, which is really, you know, influenced this area because after the war, uh, it changed over to Italy. And that's why they speak two languages there and sometimes three. So <clears throat> beautiful vistas, um, unbelievable walking, incredible food, wonderful hospitality, hikes for every level. Um, <clears throat> this is Cortina, great shopping. Um, this tower, interestingly enough, uh, and that's the Tofana mountain in the background, this is one of the few towers, one of the few bell, bells that wasn't melted down for cannonballs uh, by the Italians because the Italian general loved the sound of it so much. So it's fun things like that that I learn about. This is one of my photos. Had a group staying at a hotel and I, I just saw the light and said, get in the van. And we drove up the hill. Uh, five minutes away, and I took this shot. So this is the end de so de Ciro, just the beautiful sunset in the evenings in the Dolomites, which will blow your mind. Um, and, you know, some people believe that gems and rocks have properties, and I do too. And they say that Dolomite rock brings out a sense of peace and calmness in people. And century, a uh, hundred years ago, uh, physicians would tell their patients to go to the Dolomites, do some walking, breathe the air, you know, 
enjoy the sunshine and just relax and enjoy the view because it'll make you feel better. And when UNESCO uh, gave it its <clears throat> heritage, nat nature site heritage, they described it as some of the most beautiful mountains in the world, which I absolutely agree with. So fortunately, I was, um, you know, awarded a uh, award for top walking tour company in Italy a few years ago, which I really appreciate. And I'm going to see if I can, because we have time. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can uh, play this video, which was a trip I did with a group to Lake Garda. And um, let me just see if I can play it because it was uh, kind of typifies what a trip with me is like. So let me, let me just see if I can play it. Yeah. <laughs> Between a boy and man, she was 17 and she was far from in between. It was summertime in northern Michigan. Flashing <laughs> through the sandbar, talking by the campfire. It's the simple things in life, like when and where. The way the moonlight shined upon her head And we were trying different things And we were smoking funny things Making love out by the lake to our favorite song Sipping whiskey out the bottle Not thinking about tomorrow Singing sweet home Alabama all summer long <laughs> We blister in the sun, we couldn't wait for night to come To hit that sand and play some rock and roll While we were trying different things And we were smoking funny things Making love out by the lake to our favorite song Smoking funny things, making love out 
I was weeping like a baby when I dropped them off at the airport because we had such a great trip. And uh, they've been on a bunch of trips with me before and I just love making people happy and showing them a great time. And that was a great trip. Oh my gosh, I wish it would never end. And they said the same thing. So I got a couple of minutes here, so pretty much finished talking about the Dolomites, but I do have something coming up if you want to stay. Done 40 trips in Nepal, 20 to Everest Base Camp, and uh, don't want to do Base Camp anymore, but um, put together this, a uh, couple of years ago, I did this, um, uh, <clears throat> Everest Base Camp trip, sorry, Comfort Trek. And since then, found a company that's built these series of luxury lodges. So put together a seven day trip. I just love the Sherpas, love Nepal. And so in the spring and the fall of this year, I have a seven day Comfort Trek. We only go to 13,000 feet, stay at the Everest View Hotel, the highest luxury hotel in the world and um i have a couple of spots left on a couple of trips and would love um if you'd like to come along it's a great experience you don't have to worry about altitude or cold or sickness or you know when people sign up to go to the Everest space camp they have all this stress about getting there and this trip is not about that and we'll go to monasteries and see mount everest and get to know the Sherpas and spend a couple of days in Nepal at, the start, at Kathmandu at the start and the end of the trip and just um, sleep in a bed in a nice warm cozy lodge with awesome food and yeah not worry about altitude and crowded lodges which is what happens higher than this so um, yeah that's one of the views we're the ridge to the left with the trees, that's where we'll be staying, looking down the valley at Mount Everest. So I wrote a book. It's available on Amazon. Summit Strategies, Secrets to Mastering in the Everest in Your Life. I tell stories of some of my adventures and lessons for life and business. And um, <clears throat> we're going to finish up here. So um, have a couple of minutes for questions if you want to unmute your mic and um, ask me any questions. Happy to chat with anyone. Yeah, Gary, I had a question. I noticed this was um, being recorded and I was wondering if there's a way to get this so we could show it to friends and explain, you know, what your trip is about. And Sure. Is yes. Adam, it's going to be recorded and it'll be on the website, correct? Uh, yes, the, these will be uh, uh, these are being recorded and they'll be posted on our YouTube page. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash Midwest Mountaineering, you can find this and a bunch of other presentations that we've done virtually over the last two, two and a half years or so. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Great question.
uh, Gary, if, if you had to pick a time that you thought was the best, when when would you go? To the Dolomites. Sorry, to the Dolomites, yes. Well, it's a very specific season because the <clears throat> they pretty much have staff that come in from other countries, which is where I met my Slovakian wife. So it's mid-June through like the 25th of September. The different valleys can alternate a little bit. So Western Dolomites opens a little earlier. Um, June can be great because you have the kind of the little dusting of snow still on the mountains, less people. July, it gets busier, but the Dolomites really never get super busy. August is more busy, but I've done great trips in August, but it's hotter. So you often finish by two o'clock in the afternoon because the sun's too intense. September is incredible. You know, I'd say probably best is first three weeks of September. And that if that doesn't work, mid-June through mid-July is fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. And the prices, I mean, the prices of the hotels change each week. I mean, they've been doing this a long time and they know, okay, this is the popular time because everyone in Italy takes a holiday in August. So the hotels are more expensive. The trains are more crowded. The cities are hotter. And so, um, and I've, I used to rent an apartment all summer in the Dolomites and I've had groups in August and we would just leave earlier. We'd leave at 8 30 in the morning and we'd be out and about before the crowds um, and beat the heat. Um, so yeah, those mid June through mid July and September is fabulous. I think we have one minute left if there's any questions. Um, what's the size of your groups look like? Maybe two to eight, maybe is the max? Yeah, or... Exactly right. I've taken one person because it's what I love to do. Um, but yeah, the van fits eight. Yeah. I've taken private groups larger than that, but I find, yeah, average is four to eight people. And then I, I accommodate and talk to people about, you know, the walks and, you know, tailor that accordingly. Sure. So I guess we've got to finish up. Thank you so much for watching. And I would love to show you around the Dolomites someday or anywhere else in the world. And um, um, if you go there on your own, let me know how the experience was. Hey, Thank Gary. You. Thank you so much, Midwest Mountaineering. And Adam, you guys are awesome. And great to be back live from Slovakia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Have a great time. Thank you for presenting again and I uh, look forward to working with you in the future. Thank Terrific. you, Gary. Lee and Patty here. <laughs> great. Thanks for watching. Thank look you. To hanging out with you guys this summer. All right. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>